Springfield Armory Garrison, 4.25 inch. Let's check it out. Springfield Armory introduced their Garrison model in 2022. They have a, a pretty extensive line of 1911s, and you can go all the way from the basic all the way to really tricked out 1911s. In fact, we just did a review on their TRP, which is one of the top line production pistols from Springfield Armory. But this is one of those that has that traditional look, yet it has the upgrades that make it very shootable at the range. And to be honest with you, this is my preferred choice for a 1911. Now they've introduced the Garrison in the 4.25 inch barrel configuration. Same as the old Colt Commander or, or Colt Combat Commander because it is an all steel frame. Uh, it gives it just a little less length with the barrel and so it makes it just a little more easier to carry. It drops the weight down a little bit. And there are some definite advantages with this size handgun. In fact, the Colt Commander is one of my favorite size 1911s because it's just kind of that in-between. And while there's only three quarter inches of difference between the barrel and the slide, uh, there are differences at the range and there are differences in carrying it. And we want to give a big thank you to Springfield Armory for sending the Garrison 1911 4.25 inch model. So we're going to show you some differences between the 4.25 inch and why you would want it, or maybe you choose the full size 5 inch. The Garrison 4.25 inch barrel model. Again, this is a very classic looking 1911. And one of the things about the old GI models is they were just bare bones, but they served the U.S. military from 1911 all the way to 1985, replaced by the Beretta M9. Now this served all through World War I, World War II, Korea, Vietnam, and went on into service, especially with special ops units for a long time. It is a very proven design. But it is a 1911 design, so there have been a lot of polymer frame, striker fire, double stack, all that kind of stuff, optics ready, rail, you know, there's been a lot of additions and things that really make an excellent handgun. But with the 1911, it's as popular today as it ever has been. Now, of course, the original 1911 was designed in 1911. It was the full size, five inch barrel. It was called the government model by Colt starting out, and then a number of companies started making these. Uh, they're very popular handguns. Uh, but the 4.25 inch model actually came about in 1949 and the U.S. government was looking for a lighter weight version of the 1911. They wanted something a little smaller. They had some parameters and so Colt introduced their Colt Commander. Uh, it was a 4.25 inch barrel but it had an aluminum alloy frame. It made it much lighter. I've had a couple of them. I love them. Uh, and then in 1970, they introduced the Combat Commander with the all steel frame. So for 69 years, we never saw a Commander with a steel frame. But this is a very popular design. And we're going to talk about some of the reasons why you may choose this or choose your standard 5-inch model. And what are the differences and why would you go with one or the other? Now to me, this is just a very... Com a little bit more compact. It fits in a holster well. You know, if I'm carrying it on my hip, uh, it really reduces the weight only two ounces. You know, that's really not a lot, but it does make a difference. So lighter weight, a little easier to carry, a little shorter barrel. Uh, it's just not as big. But what are the advantages of a full-size 1911? Uh, first off, you have a little more weight, which gives you a little more recoil management. Uh, you know, I've shot these side by side. We're going to be taking them to the range and we're going to talk about it at the range. 
uh, the real differences, uh, but also it gives you a longer sight radius. And so it's going to be a little more accurate. Your sights are going to line up uh, a little bit more precise because of the length here between the two points. And really, to be honest, the 1911 is known for being very pointable. Uh, it's a very balanced handgun and it has a lot of pointability with that a little bit longer slide. Uh, but then again, when it comes to the Commander, it's a little bit more compact, shorter, and you have a very good balance. It's a different balance, but honestly, as far as just in your hand, it doesn't weigh heavy on the end. So again, these have been around for a long time. Uh, the, these are two choices that you want to make. Not Really, one's not better than the other. It's just a matter of what you're planning to do with it and you know how much you can handle the 45 ACP. Now, a lot of you seasoned shooters are going, oh, I can handle 45. Yes, I mean, I've been shooting 1911s in 45 ACP for 40 years. So, you know, I understand. But here's the thing with 9mm, which is now the most popular not selling 1911, uh, it has less recoil, uh, and these are available in 9mm. They're also available in the stainless steel versions, both the 4.25 and the 5-inch model. Now, this is, again, just the Garrison model, which, again, Springfield Armory produces a number of different uh, options, but this gets it down to not just the old basic government, but it still has that traditional look of a government 1911 or an old GI model. But the upgrades that are made to these have really been just the upgrades that I like. I don't like too much on my 1911. And to be honest with you, I'm not a big fan of an accessory rail on my 1911. If I'm on a SWAT team or I'm kicking indoors or whatever, yes, I want a light rail. I want everything. Uh, but for daily use and a good solid 1911, even for self-defense, this makes a great one. Also, no front cocking serrations, which just make this a really nice traditional slide. Uh, it's not optics ready, and you know that's one thing that I, you know, as far as a classic 1911, I just don't care about it. A big plus is the beaver tail, and the beaver tail is a high ride beaver tail. It comes up really nice, has a memory notch here. It is a safety. It's a grip safety. Really a throwback from the original 1911 because the government was requiring that. So we have a passive safety. We can bring it in. It gets your hand up high. It also protects your hand from any kind of hammer bite, which it has a delta style hammer, which rests inside the safety just like this. And so it gives it a nice low bore axis. You get your hand up high on it. And so this is a big plus. I have shot a ton of uh, 1911s without the beaver tail. Now, typically most of your 1911s being produced today have the beaver tail. But to add it to a more traditional 1911, I really like this. Uh, also with a commander hammer, it doesn't have the tang hammer, it doesn't stick out, so I like that. The frame safety, it is extended. So it just allows for you to get a hold of it and just to bring it down, bring it up, really easy to manipulate. It's not ambidextrous. Now guys, I'm not left-handed, so I don't really use that side safety unless it's, you know, I'm shooting weak-handed. But I really like it just the one side. And that's just my personal preference. It has the standard serrations on the slide. It's got those kind of GI type serrations. They're very useful. They're very adequate, honestly. Uh, and then of course with press checks, you know, I mean, it's, it's slick slide. So, you know, it's gonna have to be done a little bit differently. It just doesn't have that advantage. Now, not only is it a stainless steel barrel, it has a stainless steel barrel bushing. Uh, and this allows for this to mate up to the barrel just to make it more accurate. But uh, on traditional 1911s, we have a blued barrel bushing. This just happens to be the stainless. Very smooth finish. Uh, that hot salt bluing is beautiful. I mean, they have gone back to it and it just makes it a beautiful finish. One of the things about that is uh, these are forged slides, forged frames. And that is a huge upgrade over a lot of the 1911s that you're seeing out on the market. They're more cast. Casting's cheaper. This is a very strong way to produce a very quality handgun. And then we have a stainless steel four and two quarter inch barrel that is forged as well. Forging is just, it really adds life to not only your barrel, but also just to your parts and your wear. So it gives it a really good quality. Uh, one of the things though about the Garrison is that it is a more reasonable uh, 1911 on the Springfield Armory line. And you know, again, you can go all the way up to the TPR, which runs double what this runs. 
Uh, and, and it's worth it. It has the different bells and whistles. But for me, being a traditionalist, being someone that just likes the 1911, a little bit for the nostalgia, and also as a competitive shooter, it just gives it a very basic look. And yet again, it has all those things that I really like. Now, the grips are traditional kind of diamond pattern grips. And you have your texturing, but they are thin, super thin. Uh, and these have been made that way to give you a really thin grip. Uh, now, for me, I have medium-sized hands. That makes it even nicer. But even with larger hands, the 1911 has been known to just be one of those guns that just fits a lot of different people. But you can get the uh, thicker grips if you prefer that. But it comes with these super thin grips, which makes this feel great in your hand, makes it a very pointable handgun. I mean, to me, the one thing about this size is that it just melts in your hand. And I think that's one of the things about the 1911 that I love. Uh, it's not got the double stack thicker grip uh, where I've, you know, and I've got a hold of it. And I'm so used to those, it's not even funny, but this just really makes me feel like I'm coming back home. Now you have a skeletonized trigger. We're gonna look at that in just a minute because the one thing about 1911s is it allows for some of the best trigger pulls out there because it is a single action pistol. And it has the Novak style sights, uh, and they're sloped, they're three dot, they're really excellent. Uh, and you have a dovetailed front sight. Uh, the original had a, like a staked front sight, and we used to change those out, and the front sight would go flying off sometimes. <laughs> this just allows for you to be able to change these sights out if you want to. It's matte finish on the top, and then again, it has that high polished blue finish, which is again, just that classical 1911 look. I mean, to me, guys, again, the, the big thing for this garrison is, is just the classical look, and yet it makes it more shootable, makes it a better self-defense option with the, just the upgrades they've made. Just what I want and not a lot of extras. And that's the appeal to me of the garrison. Now here on the back strap, uh, it is checkered very well. Uh, it looks like 24 lines per square inch. It is a steel mainspring housing. It is flat. A lot of times we're seeing polymer or aluminum, and so this makes it really a very nice grippability. But then at the front, it's just smooth. And so, you know, a lot of the 1911, especially upgrades, have the checkering all across the front, and sometimes even here on the trigger guard. But this is, again, that traditional feel to it. And shooting it at the range, uh, it doesn't feel like it's gonna slip out of my hand. There are some advantages to having that texturing on the front, there's no doubt, but this is a very comfortable gun to shoot. Now there are a lot of smaller 1911s out there, um, even in 45 ACP, and the officer's model from Colt, that was a small, shorter grip, shorter front, even shorter than the 4.25, and there was a number that had been made since then. But to me, the most enjoyable shooting 1911s are these two, this, this style. Uh, when you get to the shorter ones, you know, the recoil is a little bit more. And of course, you go down to nine millimeter, you know, it does reduce that. But there's something about that 45. One of the things is when you shoot it, it's more like a shove. <laughs> and when you do a nine millimeter or 10 millimeter or even 40, it's more of a punch. And so this just is a slow moving heavy bullet, which again, I just prefer as far as for the 1911 platform because you are limited only to seven rounds plus one, or you get an eight round magazine. So 45 ACP just gives you more bang for your buck. Now let's talk about the grip safety. Uh, the 1911 is a very safe gun to carry. And one of the big things is, is if this grip safety is not deployed, and we're gonna cock the hammer, uh, it disables the trigger, it blocks the trigger. And so there's no way that you're gonna fire this, even with the safety off. Of course, put the safety on, depress the grip safety, same thing. Now, the one thing about it, this is a passive safety. A lot of people don't like it. Uh, if you have larger hands, sometimes you won't even deactivate it. I like the memory notch for that. It gives it more of a positive lockout. And so gripping this passive, bring it in. Now you've still got your frame safety. And so carrying this makes it very safe to carry. Uh, one thing too is when I carry, it's one in the chamber, magazine full, and the hammer in the rear position and the safety up, and that means cocked and locked. So when you carry this in this configuration, it's a very consistent trigger pull from the first to the last. So the first trigger pull, you know, you've got your grip safety deployed, you got your safety off, and you're going to fire. Subsequent shots just bring the slide back, which bring the hammer back, and it's got a short reset, 
and then we're back at it. And again, it's consistent with every pull. With a double action pistol, you activate the hammer with the trigger, and so that first shot is long and heavy, and then the subsequent shots are light and quick. So this is just, again, more consistency. Now we have a skeletonized trigger. It is aluminum. Uh, we have a little bit of take up right here. Uh, you can adjust your over travel. It has an over travel adjustment screw right there. And so we hit it and it just comes to a wall. And then a, a crisp break. And I'm gonna tell you, 1911s are known for a really excellent trigger. And this is a great trigger. Reset. Right there. I mean, it's really quick. In fact, it pushes it out and then back on it. Trigger pull weight with our Lyman trigger gauge. Four pounds, 3.2 ounces. Four pounds, 2.1 ounces. All right, weight on the Garrison, 4.25 inch. 34 ounces. Weight on the full size Garrison, five inch barrel. Weight on the Garrison, 4.25 inch model. 36.6 ounces. Weight on the Garrison 5-inch model, 38.8 ounces, so 2.2 ounce difference. And that might not seem like a lot, but at the range, it definitely adds a little bit of weight to the end. I want to give a big thank you to Fiocchi for sponsoring the ammo, all made in the USA. One of the largest suppliers of ammunition in the country. And uh, we've got quite a bit we're going to be shooting today. Also, we appreciate Lula Loaders. Uh, even with these single stack magazines, they load them. And uh, so this is a very versatile loader. Double stack, single stack. It's non-biased. When it comes to the 1911, I mean, guys, it's been around for a long time. It stood the test of time. It's been in combat for generations. So there's a lot of mystique around this handgun, but there are reasons why. I mean, it is such a shootable gun. Uh, the grip angle is legendary. Uh, the thinness of the grip, even if you have larger hands, the 1911 just fits really well in your hand. Uh, the beaver tail gives it a lot of traction at the web of your hand, makes it just easier to shoot. A little bit of extension on that frame safety. Again, guys, this gun has exactly what I want and no more. I like some upgrades but I like a minimal because I like to keep that look. Uh, the Novak sights are excellent and I can change those out if I need to. Got those really thin grips and that bevel in the magwell just makes it really easy. And man, when you rack that slide, <laughs> that steel on steel feels great. You know, these uh, Springfield Armory mags are working great. I was shooting some of the Metgar mags and they weren't holding back on the last round, but those mags are close to 30 years old. Uh, so it's not a big shock because Metgar makes really good magazines. But overall, I mean, these things just function extremely well. Uh, the the uh, lowered ejection port and it's just been optimized for your ball ammunition or for hollow points for that matter. Just goes in really smooth. Something about that sound, even the safety coming on. Very pointable, but one of the biggest things about the 1911 is the trigger pull. It's just optimal. And you know, you can really tune it, but even out of the box, most of your 1911s, especially when it comes to Springfield Armory, they have excellent triggers. Very manageable, very manageable in the hand, I mean, even in 45 ACP. No, it doesn't have the accessory rail, doesn't have the front cocking serrations, it doesn't, it's not optics ready. But this is still an excellent handgun. And I don't want all those things on a classic 1911. But that's just me. All right, disassembly. Uh, let's drop our magazine, check the chamber, make sure it's empty. Uh, 1911s are not that difficult to disassemble, and there are sometimes some different configurations with a full-length guide rod, things like that. This is your basic 1911. Uh, I go ahead and engage my safety, bring this up, and then 
here is your recoil spring plug. And so we're going to push it down and we're going to turn this barrel bushing. And we have to get it down to where it'll turn. And you want to get it to about 9 o'clock. Now you want to hold pressure on that plug because there's a spring behind it. We're going to go ahead and remove the plug. Next we're going to take our barrel bushing and we're going to turn it back to right here to about 5 o'clock or 4 o'clock. And that will allow for the, um, the bushing to come out from the frame. Next, we're going to bring back our slide, and we're looking for this little notch right here at your uh, slide stop. And so from the back side, once we get it lined up, we're going to push out right here from the back side. And that just allows you to pull out your slide stop. And then let your slide go forward on the frame. Uh, it has a short, small little recoil um, guide rod and your recoil spring, this does come apart. Next, we're going to take our barrel link, drop it down, and then just remove the barrel out of the front of the slide. And that's it. I mean, it's not that difficult. Yes, this was designed in 1911, so it's going to be a lot different than what we're doing today, but still, very simple. You have rails all the way across, and this gives you more stability when shooting. Uh, with the small little polymer frame striker fire pistols, they usually have a little small little abbreviated rails. This just gives you more slide to frame fit, and that has a lot to do with the joy of shooting a 1911. And of course, with the uh, slide itself, beautifully finished. Uh, I mean, it's just a very well done, and, and this is typical for Springfield Armory. They do beautiful 1911s, and known for their 1911s. Very high quality. And it's what I expect out of a Springfield. Okay, now take our barrel. We're going to reassemble. We're going to drop it back into the slide. Uh, you want to take this little link and you want to bring it down. Uh, this is what your slide stop fits through. Then we're going to take our recoil spring and our guide rod, put it back together and slide it through. Just get it set in the right place. Next, bring over your frame and your slide together. And then you want to line up your barrel link. You can look through there and you can see it. And then what I typically do is before I bring it back, I go ahead and just insert my slide stop. Then bring my slide back to that little notch. Once it's in that place, I bring up my slide stop. You don't want to scratch your frame. And if you're not careful, you just bring it over and it's called the idiot scratch. I've talked about this a number of times. There's a little detent right here and we've got to get over it. So what we do is we just push up and in. And there it goes. It's back into place. And then just let your slide go forward. And sometimes you got to get this barrel seated before it'll go forward. So just make sure you get it seated in the right position. Now take your barrel bushing. You'll notice this little raised area. It goes where the recoil spring is. And so we're going to drop it down into its place about 5 o'clock position, just like that. And then we're going to bring around our barrel bushing. Now the spring is interfering, and so we just have to line it up. Here it goes. And we want to go back to that 9 o'clock position. There we go. Now take your recoil spring plug, put it over the spring, drop it down into the slide, and then just catch that lip, push a little bit more, and then your bushing will set into place. That just holds your recoil spring plug into place. Check for function. And we're back in business. Comes in a Springfield Armory cardboard box, uh, but inside we have a little carrying case. I love this. I would much rather have this than a hard plastic box. And I have a few of these and I love them. I mean, they're padded, it's excellent. You have a place for extra magazines. It's just a, a great little handy way to keep your pistol. Uh, again, it only comes with one magazine. You do get your instructions and you have a lock underneath but really simple and uh, I like it. Very classic. Now the MSRP on the Garrison is $868. Uh, for the stainless steel model it's $917. And of course go to your local gun shop and it's typically less. What are some pros and cons? First off it's a 1911 and it's been proven in combat. I mean these are legendary. Used by the US military again for 74 years. Uh, and served through all the world wars. So it has a heritage uh, behind it. Uh, it. Again, it makes it legendary. 
Uh, are there better options out there for self-defense? Well, you know, you're limited to 7 plus 1, but it's 45 ACP. But even if you have 9mm, there's something about the 1911 that's very pointable, and it's got that very thinner grip that gives you just more to me, more confidence. I've just always loved shooting the 1911, and this is really my personal preference, even though I do carry polymer frame striker fire pistols for concealed carry. Uh, but I love the traditional look of this for a 1911, uh, especially if I'm just gonna take it out and shoot it because it just brings back a lot of nostalgia. There are other options of accessory rails. You have you know lights, lasers, uh, optics ready front cocking serrations, all the bells and whistles, checkering on the front strap. And while all those are nice and they definitely can up your game, uh, as far as just that traditional look is what I love. And that's what the Garrison's going for. As far as cons go, uh, you know, it's a 1911 and it's just a beautiful 1911. So if you're looking for a 1911, there's no cons to this to me, unless you just want to get those upgrades. And Springfield Armory has those as well. 1911. I mean, it's as popular today as it ever has been. And a lot of that has to do with it just serving the U.S. military as long as it did. And it's combat proven. And whether you go with the Garrison 1911 with that a little bit shorter, three quarter inch shorter barrel, uh, which gives you a little bit more compact size, it gives you a little bit less weight, it's very handy, or you go with a full size five inch model, which gives you a little longer sight radius, gives you a little uh, more stability at the range, a little bit less recoil a lot of point ability. And guys, honestly, it just gives us more choices. And again, we want to give a big thank you to Springfield Armory for sending the Garrison 4.25 inch barrel to this review. Be strong, be of good courage. God bless America. Long live the Republic. I like to kind of go through this because it's, okay. I just do. I just like to. If you don't like it, then don't watch it. Oh, I don't have my magazine in it. I was going to say that's light. I was going to say that is light. You got to put that mag in it. For shooting, for, uh, for whatever. It just gives you that confidence when you take it out to the range. <laughs> I guess this guy decided it's time to start grinding. I do appreciate all the polymer striker fire, or but have some real power behind. Okay, behind something you got power behind something. I don't know what that power is.